Hi, I'm Jay with Family Handyman. I was taking out the trash the other day and look what I found. This is a bona fide Sears Roebuck console stereo. Now it's in pretty rough shape, but I am going to bring it back to its former glory. The bottom of this console stereo was in pretty rough shape. I attached some quarter inch plywood using some glue and some screws. I did this step first because it required the console to be upside down and I'm going to have to repair that top later anyway. The next step is to inspect the water stain. Some water stains can be really problematic. I got lucky with this one and the damage did not go too deep. I brushed on just a little bit of shellac into the damaged veneer of the top. This brought the tone of the damaged wood back to the surrounding area. After the shellac is dried, I artistically applied a little bit of stain to hide the damaged area. Next, I'll apply a stain to the entire top, which should bring the tone down one shade and hide the damage for good. Some of the veneer on the top was damaged along the back edge. To fix the nicks and chips on the top surface, I used quick wood epoxy putty colored with a little oil paint to match the existing color. After the stain that I applied to the damaged area has been allowed to dry for an entire day, it was time to apply stain to the entire top. To further hide any more damage and discoloration, I used alcohol-based brush markers. And after those were dry, it was time for a final top coat of stain. The center panel of this console was just plain ugly, and it needed to go. I chose to do a four-way bookmatch veneer with figured sapelli. Most figured veneers are going to need to be flattened. We do this with a little bit of glycerin and a veneer press. Spray the veneer with veneer tamer and place the wet pieces between layers of craft paper and stack plywood and heavy weights on top. Once that's dry, your veneer is totally flat. I chose to cut my veneer to size while it's still sandwiched between the pieces of plywood. Two edges are cut on the table saw and then they're cut to length on the miter saw. The veneer is now ready to be glued. My technique is to spread cold press veneer glue on one side of the leaves and let it dry overnight. The next day, I'll spread one more coat of glue and let that dry for an hour. Once the glue has dried, it's time to apply the veneer to the substrate. I do this with a clothes iron set to cotton that's the perfect amount of heat to reactivate the glue. I made new speaker baffles from a quarter inch Baltic birch. After I painted the baffles black, it's time to apply the speaker cloth. I spread white glue with the roller on the face of the speaker baffle and laid down the speaker cloth on top. I let that dry overnight and trimmed it to fit. I replaced the original plastic speaker covers with real wood slats. I designed these slats to emulate the mid-century modern style in which this stereo console was made. The slats have beveled edges and a rabbit on either end. I made a jig for the table saw to accomplish all these cuts in one jig. Installing the speaker baffles was easy. I simply used a few blocks of wood on the back side, some glue, and a few brad nails. Now that the speaker grills were in, the slats needed to go on the face. I started by attaching the top and bottom rails and then placed the left and right half slats first. Then I evenly spaced the inner slats and pinned them in place. To match the veneer of the front panel, I chose Sapelli for this console's new legs. I made the legs by first making a routing template from one half inch MDF. 
I traced the template on the Sapelli and rough cut the leg with a bandsaw. Then I flush cut the legs on the router table to the finished size. Using a 5 8 inch Forstner bit, I countersunk a small hole to accept the head of the screws. I attached the legs to the console using 3 inch leg screws. When refurbishing an old console stereo, you've got a choice to keep the old components or put new ones in. And I chose new components. I found a turntable that will fit, a Bluetooth capable amp, and a pair of bookshelf speakers that fit perfectly inside. I took this opportunity to paint the inside of the console stereo black. It helped camouflage the components inside. I chose to top coat the stereo with General Finish's Armor Seal semi-gloss varnish. I applied it liberally with the brush and wiped it off with a rag applying six coats in total. This gave me that perfect luster I was after. So here it is. This stereo console restoration turned out great. We don't get to do restoration projects very often at Family Handyman and this one was really fun to do. My favorite part was the four-way book match veneer on the face. With the new audio components inside, it sounds as good as it looks. For more projects like this, visit FamilyHandyman.com.